Hey guys, thanks for joining this morning. Um, so again, this is an all levels class. It'll be a pretty mellow, um, beginner level yogis welcome. Um, later today, I will put out the schedule of IG Live classes for the upcoming week. Probably it'll look really similar to this week's. Um, if you have any requests for styles of classes or type of work you want to see, please let me know. Happy to build that into the schedule and accommodate. Um, uh, next class after today is going to be Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Hawaii time, same as last week. That's a restorative or yin yoga class um, with some breathing and meditation. Uh, you'll see that again in the schedule that comes out later today, um, so stay tuned. Uh, these classes are free. You uh, in, just feel free to take the classes and enjoy um, while we're all at home. And if you do want to donate, you can do that uh, to Venmo at Soul Shape Yoga, but again, not required. Uh, also, these classes are going up on YouTube, so feel free. Um, we should have a, a bunch of new classes on YouTube today and tomorrow, um, so if you've already done everything that's posted, there will be some new classes for you guys to take. Um, be sure to go to that YouTube channel at Soul Shape Yoga and like and subscribe so you get updates when new classes are posted. Okay, thank you guys for joining me this morning. So let's take a comfortable seat. I'm going to read you guys a quick story this morning. It's just a, a short page, but um, I read this, class, this uh, little story to a group of teacher trainees that I taught, and it kind of stuck with us um, as a little um, kind of touch point reminder or a little inner adjustment. So I'll read it to you. Um, this is by Pema Chodron. She's one of my favorite. Um, she's a female Buddhist nun. Um, and she has a big body of work, a ton of um, books that she writes, and they're, they're just lovely. And so um, this is called Experience Your Life. A woman is running from tigers. She runs and she runs, and the tigers are getting closer and closer. She comes to the edge of a cliff. She sees a vine there, so she climbs down and holds on to it. Then she looks down and sees that there are tigers below her as well. At the same time, she notices a little mouse gnawing away at the vine to which she is clinging. She also sees a beautiful little bunch of strawberries emerging from a nearby clump of grass. She looks up, she looks down, and she looks at the mouse. Then she picks a strawberry, pops it in her mouth, and enjoys it thoroughly. Tigers above, tigers below. This is the predicament we are always in. We are born and sooner or later we die. Each moment is just what it is. Resentment, bitterness, and holding a grudge prevent us from seeing and hearing and tasting and delighting. This might be the only moment of our life. This might be the only strawberry we'll ever eat. We could feel depressed about this, or we could finally appreciate it. We could delight in the preciousness of every single moment. One of my um, students and friends reminded me of this recently, and so I thought I would share it. And um, it's always appropriate, but it feels especially maybe appropriate right now with everything that's going on. Um, right, tigers above and tigers below. It seems like um, anytime we turn to the news, it's, um, it's bad news or it's stressful. Um, all of us are dealing with certain levels of stress due to a, a bunch of different reasons. And so it seems like everywhere we turn, there's a tiger. Everywhere we turn, there's, there's um, you know, potential uh, scary outcome, right? And so this, today's class is just about finding the sweet spots. Um, it's about, you know, even when there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, all around us, that there, there's always a, a little strawberry somewhere to be found, right? We can always find um, a little sweetness. We can always find some small thing to be grateful for. And even when everything seems all upside down and crazy and there's tigers all around, there's, there's always a strawberry to be had. So that's my little story for you this morning. <laughs>
Go ahead and close your eyes. And start to notice your breathing and just notice how you're breathing. Maybe you just woke up and the breath is barely awake yet. Maybe you've had a lot of coffee and the breath is already sort of rapid. Maybe your breath just feels sweet and even, but however it is, just take a moment to notice. Notice any sounds you can hear around you in your space. Notice how you can feel your seat touching your block or the floor, your hands maybe on your lap. You might notice the sensation or the temperature of air on your skin. And then allow yourself to notice um, what's a strawberry you could pick out this morning, right? Amidst everything that's going on, what's a sweetness you could identify in your own life? I've been writing gratitude lists every day as a practice um, just to make sure that my focus stays where it should. So maybe on your own heart this morning or on your own mind, just writing a little gratitude list, maybe one, two, or three things before we start class here. As you're ready, you can pull your hands up to your heart. We'll begin class singing three ohms. And you can sing along with me at home if you want, and if you don't want to, by all means, you can just listen. So we'll do the breath together as you're ready. Please take a deep exhale. Listen again to the sounds of silence or whatever you can hear around you in the space after those ohms. And so from here, again, in whatever comfortable seat you're in, We'll take our hands to our knees and really simply inhaling and exhaling with a seated cat cow. So pull on your knees and as you inhale, lift your chest up towards the sky, slide your shoulders back. And as you exhale, round your spine back, look in towards your belly button, press between your shoulder blades on your back. Again, with your breath, inhale, shoulders roll back, lift your chest up. And exhale, round your spine. Good. Really let that pull on all your tight places. 
and do three more with your breath. So move at your own breath pace, not necessarily how I'm moving because everyone's breath is a little different. Feel your whole spine stretch and move. Really feel your shoulder blades roll and slide as you move. And most important thing of all, let your breath be really full. Like the breath itself is a stretch from the inside of the lungs out. Okay. And then same seated position, let your right hand touch the floor. Bring your left arm up and over and lean to the side. So feel this lateral stretch, feel your right sitting bone sink into the floor, and then move your right arm back in space, making a huge arm circle. You can sweep your fingertips across your body and towards the floor, and then back up. So again, make this movement with your breath. Feel it go all the way from your hip to your fingertips along the side body. And, and let yourself look for the sweet spot. See if you can find maybe places in somewhere along this stretch that just feels so good. Right? I'm not going to ask a lot of you physically this morning, so I'm just asking you to really enjoy, really dig into what feels sweet. Give yourself permission for a moment to not have to do so much, right? to not have to perform, but just to feel really good. If any places feel really good, you might even take a moment for an extra stretch there. And then slowly you'll come on up to sit. Take your other hand to the ground. Really root down into your opposite sitting bone. Reach your arm up and over. Fill up all the way through your lungs. Again, like the breath itself is a stretch from the inside out. And then roll your uh, top shoulder back. Good. Sweep around. Try to connect the movement to your breath in some way. Maybe your inhale is up here while we're opened. And the exhale is bending forward, sweeping forward. And this can totally be a, you know, organic movement for you all on your own. It doesn't have to look like any certain thing. Again, just permission to let it feel really sweet, to let it feel really good. Do a few more of these big circles. You might find a place where your neck can stretch in here. And last big breath. Nice. Um, and so I'm, I was sitting on a block. I'm going to slide that out now. It's up to you. You could keep your block under your hips if you want. Just stay with this simple cross-legged position, and we're going to fold forward here. If folding forward, your head comes anywhere near the floor, maybe a block could go underneath your forehead. If not, no problem. We'll just lean forward, supporting ourselves with the hands. Some of you might be able to splay out all the way. Here too, let your spine sway gently side to side if that feels good. And allow yourself to make this yoga practice your own this morning. So always looking for your own little strawberries, your own little sweet spots. Right? All of our bodies really unique and different, so different things feel good. See if you can relax over the legs for two more breaths. Maybe you even open your mouth and with an exhale, just let out a little sigh, releasing your jaw joint. Slowly lift up on an inhale, lean back, cross your legs the opposite way, opposite leg in front. And same thing, we'll lean the sitting bones back. You could even pull the flesh of your seat back a little bit. Lift and lengthen through your chest, and then as you exhale, deep fold over the legs. 
Again, you might place a block underneath your forehead if that works or fits your body position. And you might sway around in any other way that feels good as well. Take one more deep breath here. Uh, release the jaw as you exhale, maybe open the mouth. All right, we'll slowly come on up. You guys hear our rooster? Oh, um, my live feed just kicked itself off, babe. I'll try to restart it. Were you talking to me? Yeah, it kicked me off the live feed. Oh. It's showing you live again. I know, I just turned it on, but it had stopped it. Hey guys, I, this is the first time this happened, but I just got kicked off the live feed for some reason. Yay, we're back. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Okay. All right, so we'll all arrive again. Sorry, friends. I, that's the first time that's happened. I don't know what that was. Uh, but anyway, let's come back. Okay, so we're going to turn onto our right side. So you'll stretch your right legs, or you'll stretch both legs straight out behind you, and then place your right hand to the floor. Okay, so you see this pose. I want you to take your left knee and bend it, place it in front of your right knee. Okay, now I'm going to press down into my right hand, press down into the outer edge of the right foot, and then lift the hip up. Okay, and I'm going to reach my left arm to the sky, so a supported side plank pose. We're going to move in and out of this as well, so this will be our inhale. And as you exhale, strong in your right shoulder, sink your right hip to the floor and reach your left arm towards your left toes. Okay, so we should feel a side stretch through the lower right belly here. As we inhale, we're going to pick the hip up, arch towards the sky. Good, and exhale, set that hip down towards the floor, reach your left arm back, feel the right side belly stretch. Okay, again, inhale, lift up. Exhale, lower. Two more, inhale, lift up strong through that right shoulder. Exhale, lower, can you really press into that right hand, feel a good stretch through your right side belly. One more. Nice, and lower. Okay, now these are big moves for a video, uh, but can you bend your right knee so it's inside of the left heel? Okay, so I'm sitting up, both sitting bones on the floor, right knee forward, and I'm going to see if I can stack my left knee a little bit on top. Okay, so this is Gomukhasana pose. My knees are stacked. I'm sitting on the floor inside of my heels if can. You can also sit on a block for this pose. Okay, here any amount, I'm gonna lift forward, nice tall spine. I'll show you from the side. And then as you exhale, we're gonna lean in again over the hips. If this hip stretch is pretty inaccessible, you can definitely extend your right leg straight. So just the left knees over the top and fold this way. That's gonna be a much bigger hamstring stretch. Okay, otherwise, go Mukhasana pose, hips to the floor. We'll take another few breaths here, just getting into the hips. Okay, really big objective this morning is to keep that breath moving fully and deeply. So moving old, stale air out of the lungs. We just woke up, so getting the breath moving in a deep way is good. Getting the breath moving in a deep way will calm down our nervous systems, which maybe can be a little frayed at this time with everything going on. 
Take one more breath. Good. From here, press your hands to the floor. Rock forward onto your knees and then step the feet back for a downward facing dog. First one. So we warm up the shoulders, we warm up through the legs. You can pedal your feet. Stretch one heel to the ground and then the other. You can even stretch out the back of the neck by looking up towards your thighs. So gazing here in between the thighs, like you were trying to see all the way to your belly button. I can't see my belly button, so don't worry if you can't either. Good, from here we'll come forward. Go ahead and drop your knees to the floor, and then we're gonna turn onto our left side. Okay, so both legs go straight again. I'm gonna prop myself up on my straight left arm. Bring your right foot in front of you, Place it to the ground in front of your left knee, okay? See that your left hand is slightly forward of your shoulder. Tone your belly, and as we inhale, push into the outer edge of your left foot, reach your right arm up. If you even wanna arch your ribs towards the sky here, you can press up more. And then as you exhale, right hand reaches towards your right toes. I want you to feel a stretch through the lower left belly. Good, inhale up, exhale, three more, go with your breath, good, exhale, so this will be about the strongest pose we might do, at least for our shoulders, so don't worry, good, up and lower, moving your breath, getting the lateral body, side bodies big and open. Okay, so then seated from here, just bend your right knee so it hooks behind, uh, I'm sorry, your left knee so it hooks behind your right ankle. Sit on the ground inside of your heel and then try to stack both knees up together. Now for a lot of us that might not work and so then you can extend your bottom leg, that'll be a little easier. And we'll fold this way. Hmm. Otherwise, a couple breaths here in Go Mukhasana. Lengthen your spine forward, and then let yourself fold. If you fold deep enough here, you could place your forehead on a block. See if you can let the weight of your torso put some pressure on the hips. Right, so there's not a lot of engagement in this pose. We're just allowing the weight of our torso to create that stretch in the outer glutes and hips. There's some compression in this pose in the inner groins. Good. See if you can hang your head, let the back of the neck stretch for one last breath. As we inhale, we'll lift up. Okay, press your hands into the floor, rock forward. Step your feet back to downward facing dog. Good, root both hands into the floor. Find a nice long spine and nice long legs. If your hamstrings are tight, let your knees bend. Pull your shoulder blades down your back towards your waist. We're going to lift our left leg up to the sky. And on your exhale, step your left foot forward through your hands. Okay, so we'll be in a runner's lunge here. Two choices of how to do this next pose. You can drop your back knee. That'll be a little easier. If you're wanting stronger this morning, lift that back leg up. We're going to keep our right hand on the floor and then extend your left arm to the sky for a twist. Let yourself hold about two more breaths. Squeeze your inner thighs towards the midline and really feel that nice rotation in your spine. Good, one more breath. And on your exhale, left hand to the floor. 
Drop your right knee to the ground. I'm going to show you this next pose from the front. Okay, so we'll all have right knee on the floor, left knee forward for a lunge. I, if you have a block handy, I'm going to put that block on my left side. If you don't have a block, you can just do this pose holding your hip. So I'm going to push my feet into the floor, squeeze into center. I'm going to reach my right arm up and over. Okay, so if you don't have a block, you could definitely stay here, hand on the hip. If you do have a block, you could use that block on the floor alongside of you to lean a little bit further. And again, let yourself search for the sweet spot. So maybe you look down towards your left hand. Just exploring our poses, maybe you look up underneath that right arm, maybe the right arm moves back slightly further. Good, with our next inhale, we're gonna reach both arms up overhead. So stretch the palms to the sky, tuck the tailbone down, and let your shoulder blades slide down the back. If it's comfortable for you here, let your hip sink forward towards your front heel. So just a nice stretch through the right psoas. That's your hip flexor or front of your right hip. Good, take one more breath, maybe arching way back. And as you exhale, touch your hands to the floor and we'll step it back to downward facing dog. In your downward facing dog, come forward to your plank pose. And then we're gonna drop our knees to the floor. See if you can drop your chest towards the floor inside your hands, and then stretch your chin forward. This pose is called the Ashtangasana. Squeeze your shoulder blades on your back, smile. Then point your toes and pull your belly forward for a little cobra. Okay, take an extra breath or two here. Really try to fill your breath into the back of your ribs. And on your exhale, our first child's pose today, open your knees wide, let your belly sink in between the thighs, take a little rest. And let yourself check in mentally. Has your mood changed from the beginning of class till now? Has your breathing pattern changed? How does your body feel? Right, reminding ourselves that what we do has an effect mentally, emotionally, physically. Right, we have a lot of power to change how we feel. Okay, so we'll press our palms to the floor and then lift the hips up again for down dog. Lift your right leg up to the sky. Good, and step your right foot forward, top of your mat. Your choice again, feel free to drop your back knee, a more beginner version of the pose, or just easier. Or if you like, keep your back knee lifted. We're gonna touch our left fingertips to the ground. Feel free to put a block under your left hand if you like. And open your right arm to the sky for a basic twist. See if you can fill your breath in 360 degrees all the way around your lungs. I know a lot of you joining us today are probably more advanced uh, yoga practitioners than this practice. Feel free to do more at home or feel free to just enjoy the simple stability of these poses. Breathe deep. One more breath. Good, and then exhale, bring the hands to the floor. Everyone, drop your back knee. I'll do this pose again facing you. Okay, so my left knee is on the floor, right foot forward. If you have a block, set it to the ground outside of your right hip. If not, take your right hand to your right hip. On an inhale, lift your left arm up. Good, tuck your tailbone down here. Keep your belly toning in and then start to lean to the right. 
squeeze your inner thighs towards the center so that when you lean to the right, you're not going to lose your balance. And then if you do have that block, you could reach to the floor, making a little deeper stretch. Okay, make sure you're exploring for the sweet spots. The hips might shift forward some. Your gaze could go up or down, finding different stretches in the neck. All the while, just taking the deepest, sweetest breaths. Okay, really root through your foot and your back knee, and then engage your belly and come on up. And reach your arms to the sky. Let the shoulder blades soften down the back. So stay here in just an upright lunge position, if you like, or if the back is comfortable and it feels good, you could reach into an extension. Tuck your tailbone a lot if you're extending the back. Pull your right heel towards your back knee. One more breath. Great. As we exhale, touch down to the floor. From here, lift your back knee up and step your back foot forward, top of your mat. Here's a place where if you have those two blocks, you could extend pressing into your blocks. Some of you taking in this Ardha Uttanasana pose, touching the floor or your shins. And as you exhale, let your feet be at least hips width apart and we're gonna fold. We'll take a ragdoll fold, catch opposite elbows. Feel free to bend your knees a little or a lot and maybe even sway side to side. Let your head shake yes and no. Again, not asking too much of yourself, but just letting yourself be in this sweet fl flow, right? Find those strawberries. Okay, press feet to the floor. On an inhale, reach your arms all the way up to the sky. Good, pull your hands to your heart with an exhale. Yeah. On your inhale, reach the arms up again. Just take your arms up and wide. Let the shoulders slide down your back. Enjoy a little bit of extension here. If it feels good, you can arch the heart to the sky. This is my favorite pose in all of yoga. Big happy breath, big smiling inhale. With an exhale, hands to heart. Good, take a big inhale and exhale here, looking down into the hands. Again, maybe finding a moment of gratitude or one of those sweet strawberries. Okay, and we're gonna press into our right foot and then step your left foot back. So lift your left knee, step that foot back slowly. Take your toe down and then your heel down. We're gonna stay here with the hip squaring towards the front of our mat, but please know that that left hip is not gonna come all the way square and you don't have to try to force it. So the left hip will be slightly back, turn the torso forward and on an inhale, reach your arms up. Good, warrior one. Feel the strength of your right leg. For a calf stretch, press that back heel into the floor. See if you can draw your chin towards the base of your neck. Start to uh, turn the chest upward and look up for a little more expansion through your chest here. Bring your hands to your heart as you exhale. Now, line your feet up. So we're moving the back foot so it's in line with the right foot. Okay. We'll bend our knees here and float the arms up for warrior two. Let's straighten that right leg for a moment, giving it a little break. And with your exhale, re-bend. And straighten that leg with an inhale, giving it a little break. With an exhale, re-bend. Watch your knee point over the middle of your foot. Straighten one more time. As we exhale, re-bend. 
Take your left hand down your left leg and then reach the right arm up and over. Exalted warrior. Feel strong in your core and let that core strength hold your body up as you lean back. Good, come on up, bring your hands to heart. And here we'll simply pivot on our feet so you'll be facing the back of your mat. Okay, my feet now again are hips width apart. I'm gonna bend my right knee, or bend my left knee, let the right hip drag back a little bit, but square the torso towards the front of the or towards the front edge of your mat. Reach the arms up, warrior one. Good. Let yourself smile here, press into the back heel. Maybe your arms can float just slightly wider and then let the shoulder blades slide down the back as you curl your chest up. Try not to just drop your head back and cut off the throat. Let your chin come in towards the base of the neck and then extend the neck if you look up. Back of the neck is long. Come on out, hands to heart, and then adjust your feet so that they're parallel. So just as, uh, I'm sorry, adjust your feet so that the front foot intersects the back. Bend your left knee over the ankle. See that your toes are pointing towards the middle of your left foot, and then float the arms up for warrior two. Good, press into left leg, stretch it straight with an inhale, and exhale, bend your knee. Inhale, straighten. Steady breath, exhale, bend. Your gaze can be over the front fingertips, so fixing our gaze, straighten the leg, helps our mind focus, exhale, bend. One more time, straightening the leg. Okay, and then this time as we exhale, bend your knee over your ankle. Grab your, you can drop your right hand to your left thigh. I'm sorry, your right hand to your right thigh. Turn the left palm up and then extend back. Exalted warrior, feel the front body open up wide. Can you find your sweet spot in this pose? What feels good? Sometimes our legs can be shaky, things can feel hard, right? Tigers above, tigers below, maybe we're sweating, but find what feels good in the pose, right? Find a little sweetness. Good, we're gonna come on out. Okay, pivot your feet all the way forward to the front of your mat. Touch your hands to the floor. Hey, we're gonna lift that left heel up, place your palms, step your right foot back, drop your knees. Okay, you drop your chest towards the center of your palms, butt stays high, and then drop your chin, Ashtangasana. Point your toes and inhale the chest forward for a cobra. And exhale, knees go wide, shift back again into a, a child's pose. Walk your hands out to the left. Okay, push your palms to the floor. Feel a little extra stretch underneath your right armpit. Melt your right armpit towards the floor. You can even gaze out a little bit to your left. Walk your hands through the center and off to the right side. Let your left armpit melt towards the floor while you look slightly off to the right. Walk your hands forward, press your palms to the floor, tuck the toes, down dog. Hey, from our down dog, we're gonna walk up to the top of our yoga mat. Extend to a halfway lift. 
Hold on your exhale. And press your feet down and with an inhale breath, reach all the way to the sky. Look up here, let the corners of your mouth turn up. Best pose in all of yoga. Good, hands to your heart as you exhale. So we're gonna take a balance pose here. We'll string together two balance poses. If you're not sure about balancing in the center of your mat um, and you have a wall nearby, you could always step to the wall uh, to hold as we balance on one foot. So we're gonna start with our left foot down. And I just want you to lift your right knee into the chest and hold your right knee with your right hand. Left hand can go to hip. Okay, so really press from the inner left thigh all the way into the inner edge of your left foot. Tone your belly. And then we're going to open the right knee to the side as we inhale. From here, if you want to challenge your balance, again, the gaze has a, a, a big factor in our balance. So if you want to look to the left, it might be a little more challenging, but if you're up for it, you could shift your gaze to the left. Good. If you shifted your gaze to the left, slowly bring it forward. Bring your right knee back to center. And then can you cross your right knee over the left? Right? Crazy. Okay. Now, if you like, you could put your right toe on the floor. So feel free to bend the knees a lot and maybe place your right toe on the ground. So we still have two points of contact. If you want to hug your feet together and balance just on the one foot, that's fine too. We're going to wrap our left arm over the right. Okay? So cross your left arm over the right. See if you can catch your arms. This will be just our next most advanced pose of this class. So we're going to squeeze the arms, squeeze the legs. See if you can bend your knees a little deeper. Hug everything in. Take a deep breath. Nice. And then as we inhale, unwind the arms, reach them up. Unwind the legs, stretch that right leg out to the side. Good, and then place everything to the floor. Let your hands come down, legs come down, take a breath. Notice all those sensations in the legs, in your heartbeat, in your breathing. Shift your weight into the right foot. From your inner right thigh, press down. And when you're ready, lift your left knee to the chest. Again, if you're using a wall, stand with your right side to the wall and just touch the wall with your right hand. Okay, squeeze that right inner thigh firmly, and then we're going to open our left knee to the left. Feel free to stay here with your gaze forward. Or again, if you want a little extra challenge, you could look over your right shoulder to the right. Anytime we move the gaze, move the gaze slowly. Right? If we move the gaze slowly enough, oftentimes we can keep our balance while it shifts. Okay, change your gaze forward again. And from here, we're going to bring our knee over the right leg. So this is just like you're sitting cross-legged in a chair. Okay, you can bend the knees so much that your left toes touch the floor. That'll still give you two points of balance. If you want to hover your left foot and squeeze it to the right, go ahead. Okay, we're going to bend our knees like sitting into a chair. Cross your right arm over the top. See if you can grab your hands, maybe grab anything, and if not, just squeeze your elbows together and arms together as close as you can. Okay, so hug everything into the midline here. If you want to challenge yourself, bend your knees a little more, sit a little bit deeper, keep your deep breath. As we're ready, we're going to unwind the arms, reach them up to the sky, and then unwind your legs, lift your left knee, stretch that leg out to the side. Place everything to the floor, everything down. Take a moment to put a hand on your heart, feel your heartbeat. Finding a little sweetness in this moment. 
Okay, from here, top of your mat, turn uh, forward if you want. Reach the arms up. Good. On our exhale, fold to the floor. On our inhale, lift up halfway and then step your left foot back. Walk this right foot to the left side of your mat for pigeon pose. If your hip hovers high off the floor, grab a pillow, couch cushion, a block, place that underneath your right hip. We want our hips to be squaring towards the ground. And then from this position, this is pigeon pose, we're gonna lean in to the forearms. You could lean in to put your head on a block. So we start to come towards the more relaxing part of this class. The breath should still be deep, but see if you can start to slow the breath down some. Notice if your shoulders are crowded up by your neck or your ears and let the shoulders relax away from the ears. Take one more deep breath here. With our inhale, we're going to lift up. Now just lean into your right hip and swing your left foot forward. I'll show you this facing you. So my right foot is in the inner edge of my left thigh, right knee bent, left leg extended. I'm going to take my left hand to the floor inside of my left knee or more flexible forearm to the floor, my hand reaching near my ankle. Okay. From here, I'm going to turn my right rib cage open to the right. My right arm is going to extend up and over as if it were reaching for my left toes. So again, a big lateral opening. Keep turning your rib cage to the sky. One more breath here, really reach over. Maybe some of you just able to touch your toes. And as we come on up, I'm gonna bring my right knee in a little bit more. So I'm trying to face my hips forward. Turn your torso over your left leg and then extend over your left leg for Janu Shirshasana or head to knee pose, a big hamstring stretch for the left leg. For those of us with tighter hamstrings, you can let that left knee bend. Hey, I'm really hinging at my hips to lean forward here. I want to feel the most stretch on the hamstring left side. I can also feel quite a bit of stretch across the right lower back. On an inhale, we'll lift up. Okay, so now listening to how we'll change up this next pose, I'm gonna bend my left knee, lean into my left hip, and then I'm gonna send my right leg back, turn my hips towards the floor, and there's pigeon pose, second side. Okay, you can walk your left foot as high as you're able. Again, it doesn't have to go very high. Mine doesn't go too far in front of my hip. If your hip is up off the floor, you can prop it up on a couch pillow or a block and then turn your chest to the floor and we'll relax here for a few breaths, stretching the left hip. This is a strawberry pose for me, right? A lot of sweetness here. Depends sometimes <laughs> if I'm really tight, it might not be a strawberry pose. Okay, 
And we always want these poses to feel good. There should be no pain in the knee here. No uh, intense sensations in the knee joint. The stretch should be completely in the left hip or outer part back of the left leg. On our inhale, we're going to lift up, okay, and bring your right leg forward. Okay, set the left foot into the right thigh, and then uh, bring your right hand or forearm inside of the right leg. Turn your left chest open to the side, and then extend your left arm over. You can push into your right leg with your right elbow or right hand to assist your rotation open to the left. Feel like there's a 10 pound sandbag on your left hip. Something's holding that left hip down as we reach to the side. And on your inhale, we'll lift up. Now turn your chest towards your right leg. Adjust your hips so that they're facing forward. Okay, I'm going to turn my right side belly open a little bit to the right and then extend long over the right leg. Again, for tighter hamstrings, put a small bend in the right knee. Here you can fold in. This is called head to knee pose. You'd really have to round your back to get your head to your knee perhaps, but with an extended spine, feel like you're lengthening your sternum bone forward towards your knee. Feel some stretch in the lower left back. Right in a big stretch in the right hamstring, another breath or two. With an inhale, we're gonna lift up. Okay, stretch both legs forward in front of you on your mat. You can hold behind your knees, and we're going to roll to our back to lie down. Okay, we'll hug our knees into chest here for a quick second. Okay, and we're going to take a twist, so I'll let you decide how you do that. Um, an easier variation is knees simply together, and we'll drop our knees to the left. Okay. Earlier, standing up, we wrapped our right knee over the left, like cross-legged uh, pose. Feel free to do that here, and then bring your knees to the left for a twist. That's going to be a little harder. Okay, so up to you, knees together, or knees crossed for our twist. So my knees go to the left. I'm placing my left hand on top of my knees, my right arm stretched out to the side. Okay, so sort of like we did earlier in class, we're going to make arm circles with this right arm. So reach that arm up overhead, forward over your face, and then down along the whole side of the body, and then back out to the right. Okay, let these arm circles move really slowly as your breath starts to slow down. You might close your eyes while we make these movements. I always feel like this version of a twist with the arm circles is like a little lullaby. It feels really calming to me. And when you've had enough of the arm circles, then let your arm rest out straight out to the right for a few breaths. And so stillness of the mind is the goal of yoga. Stillness of the mind to me always feels like a little strawberry, like a little sweet spot. So see if we rest here for another moment. Can you just hear sounds around you? Notice any physical sensations in the body and see if we've slowed down.
And I feel like I can stay here forever, but one more breath. Okay, let's bring our knees up to center. Reset your pelvis on your mat so it feels level and even. And then bring your knees into the chest. So some of us took a simple twist, knees together, out to the side. Others of us might have crossed that left leg over the right for eagle leg twist. Okay, so either way, our knees are going to the right side, crossed or uncrossed. And just take an initial breath here in the pose. And then when you're ready, using your breath to make these large arm circles. So the left arm circles around, it crosses, grazes your hip. You can drag it lightly all along the floor, up overhead. Exhale as the arm comes to the lower half of the body. Inhale as the arm comes up and just move so slowly. Again, this could feel like a little lullaby, just setting us up to feel stillness of the mind, setting us up for Shavasana coming soon. When you feel complete, open your left arm out to the left side. See if you can quiet your body entirely, except for your breath. And let yourself notice any sounds you can hear. Notice any physical sensations without judgment. Notice any little strawberries or sweetnesses you can find here. One of my sweetnesses is being able to share these classes with you, to be able to meet up with you guys virtually while we're all at home. Thank you so much. Okay, as you're ready, you can bring your knees up to center. Place your feet to the floor and reposition your hips so they feel parallel and balanced on your mat. Stretch your arms out to your sides and then one leg at a time. You can let yourself stretch out for Shavasana. If there's any last poses you'd like to do before full rest, go ahead. Otherwise, we'll Link up now to rest. I do encourage you to stay for a long Shavasana. Um, I'll end our video, but you can stay in your resting pose. Thanks again for joining me for this beginner practice today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. More videos coming out weekly.